be wondering, why is this t video titled Fixing the Front End? I'm surprised no one ever told me before, but this is a cafe racer. The front end should be lowered down. This bike is way too high. Also, the headlight. The headlight needs to be moved down, and it needs to be more lined up with the seat and the gas tank. These are all just basic characteristics of cafe racers that I overlooked while I was building this bike. Today is the day that this is all gonna change. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the Gold Guy channel. Thank you so much for clicking on yet another one of my videos. I'm doing something different today. This isn't a scrambler build episode. I am returning to the Cafe Racer. But before I start this video guys, I want to shout out my Patreon account. The link in the description. I don't know if you guys can see what's wrong with this. I'm sure some of you can. But if you can't, I'm going to just tell you. This thing is way too high up for a Cafe Racer. To be a Cafe Racer, it has to be lower to the ground so you can have more control and so you can go faster. And this bike, it just really doesn't make sense. I'm really surprised none of you guys ever commented telling me that I need to lower this bike because it's just too high. And riding it, it's, you can't really control it as much because this thing's, the back end's down low, nice and low where it should be, and the front end is just up high, and it just doesn't make sense. So in this video, I'm going to be lowering it. I'm going to be lowering the forks, dropping the forks down, making this bike lower like it should be. I'm also going to be changing out the gauge cluster up here because the tachometer doesn't even work as you've seen in tons of my videos. Um, it's just big and goofy, it just doesn't look sleek, doesn't look right, so I'm going to be changing it out with a single, with a, just a single tachometer and speedometer unit, kind of like I did on my scrambler. But in this video, it's going to be much more shortened, I'm not going to be going through everything of wiring up the speedometer and everything. If you want to see that, I'll put the link in the description. Also, I'm going to be lowering the headlight, and I think I did have someone comment telling me I need to do this, but I really just overlooked a lot of the characteristics and qualities that a cafe racer needs to have, um, and the headlight and the forks. The headlight being in line with the gas tank is a big one, and a lower front end is also a big one. I'm going to be doing both of those things in the video. Enough talking, I feel like I just read a book. Let's get into this thing. Hope you guys enjoy it. Ear. Now we're going to lower the bike down, and how we're going to do that is just by loosening up these triple clamp fork connectors. Damn, that was a tight bolt. Well, So I got all the bolts loosened up, let's go ahead and try to slide this thing down. I really don't know how easy this is going to be. It's a new day. I ran out of time yesterday working on the bike, but I've got the front end lowered just a little bit. It's definitely a lot harder to get these forks sliding around than I thought. And I think I just saw the problem, actually. Looks like the choke cable connector here is hitting the fork. So here's what I'm talking about guys. This little choke connector tab is hitting the top of the fork here. All right, got that moved out of the way. Let's see if we'll move now. Oh yeah, now the forks will move. With that choke cable moved out of the way, I can really see just how much I want the bike lowered. Looks like this one's coming up way more than the other one is. That's definitely too much right there. All right, now to get these forks exactly where I want them, I got this really messed up mallet. I know, I need a new one. This is all I've got right now. I'm gonna go about half inch down on each one because it still looks like I don't have much travel on the suspension. Right now I'm at about a three inch lower. I think I'm gonna shoot for 
a two inch lower and I think that should give me just enough travel in the suspension and just enough lower. Another piece came off the old mallet. She's done. It lasted a little less than a year. I think it held up to the Harbor Freight name about a year. All right guys, we're at exactly two and a quarter inches on both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up these bolts and then the lowering job is done. Lovely. The next big characteristic of a cafe racer is to have the headlight in line with the gas tank in the seat. Basically you want the whole bike to be, to kind of have a line to it that goes from the seat to the gas tank to the headlight. And that's just a cafe racer characteristic. I've got the headlight bucket mounting brackets loosened up. Now I'm just gonna hit them with a hammer and slide the whole headlight down. Wow, that was actually really easy to slide the whole headlight unit down. So this is as low as I can get it. If you guys would want yours any lower than this, what you would have to do is actually take these brackets off and flip them so that they're angled downward. This is fine for me. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up and then we're gonna take care of this business. The first thing we need to do to remove the old speedometer tachometer unit is to remove the speedometer cable and the tachometer cable, which is up here. Oh, uh, fuck. Won't be selling that. Just broke it. Now up to the tachometer cable. This one's held in by an eight millimeter nut. Obviously this is 10 millimeter, it's too big. This one's already broken, so it doesn't matter if I break it. And I'm gonna need to cover this hole up with something. I'm probably just gonna end up mixing up some JB weld and sealing that hole off. Just look at how much higher up this whole unit is from the headlight. If I left it like that, I would be an idiot because that just looks so silly, so stupid. These are coming off. Time to get this big unit off and it's off. It's gonna go on something like that. I'm definitely gonna have to make some kind of a bracket to hold it in. Many of you guys, this might just look like a piece of trash. Lettering's all faded away. It's missing pretty much everything, but this little piece of trash is gonna make my life a whole lot easier. I'm really lucky I just had this laying around because it is actually a 1981 CB750 speedometer and tachometer bracket, so it already fits. Then I'm gonna have to just cut away a little bit here, bolt on the new speedometer unit, and I'm gonna be good to go. And another thing that is just icing on the cake, just really, really great. See this connector here? This fits on the old connector. The new speedometer does not fit because all these are male and the harness coming from the bike is male. So what I'm gonna do, cut this connector off, splice it on to these connectors, and then it'll just plug and play right in. And then I'm just gonna have to connect the new speedometer wires to this one. All right guys, so I've got the new speedometer tachometer unit installed. Everything's wired up correctly. And it was actually a lot easier the second time around. And again, the reason why I shortened the video so much during this part is because I just recently posted a video, a very in-depth video where I put one of these new electronic units on my Suzuki GSA 50 Scrambler and if you haven't seen that there will be a link in the description to that video. I've got the headlight lowered down, I've got the new speedometer on, forks lowered, the whole front end of the bike is lowered down and I noticed a problem when I sit on the bike um, the forks sag down a lot. If you turned your older bike into a cafe racer you want a bit firmer front suspension, you want it to be you want it to act more like a sport bike Whereas right now they act more like a cruiser. And since I lowered them, I really need to get a little bit of that firmness back. I'm going to be using this PVC pipe. I'm going to cut about a two inch little spacer off that's going to be going in the top of the fork. I actually saw this on 
one of the CB750 forums, so I'm going to put a link to that in the description so you know I'm not just making this up. Other people have done this. So a lot of bikes have an actual like kind of nut that comes up to the top where you can just put a wrench on it, but mine's the other way around. You actually need like a really big Allen wrench, and I don't have a really big Allen wrench, but I got insanely lucky because I got this uh, chisel I made in metal shop class in school, and it actually fits in there. It's well enough to put a wrench on it and unscrew these caps, so that's what I'm gonna do. Alright, and to change your fork oil, you just want to take out this bolt on the bottom of your fork. That's the oil drain plug. Just loosen it up. Make sure you have a pan or something ready, because it's gonna just spray out if you have a lot of it in. This fork oil is really past its due date. You can just see how watery it is. These seals up here probably need change too. Pop that bolt back in. Okay, and as per the manual, we're going to be using 12 ounces of this Dexron 3 automatic transmission fluid. If you're watching this, Mom, I'm sorry. I promise I'll wash this afterwards. Okay, perfect. And then that spring goes back in. I guess I just got really lucky and found a PVC pipe that's about the same exact size as that spring. So I'm just gonna cut an inch of this off, add it to the top of the spring, and then put this back in and it should get rid of that sag. Two fork spacers, ready to go. So after a lot of trial and error, I found out that the biggest spacer I can fit in there is half inch. So that's just gonna have to do. We're gonna get that in there, tighten it up, and then that'll take care of that sag. Oh, finally, I think I got it. Holy shit. That was so hard. Oh my gosh. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh yeah, that's in there. Now I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side. Also a little update on my scrambler, guys. I have chopped up the muffler section of the exhaust and cut about an inch or two off of it and then I, sh I shortened it and then I angled it up a little bit so it it looks a lot better than it did before. I'm really happy with how the exhaust on this bike came out. If you didn't see the video where I gave myself more ground clearance before it was hanging under the oil pan, now I have about almost a foot of ground clearance. Check it out, link in description. Well guys, thanks for watching another one of my videos. It's been almost nine months since I made a video about the Cafe Racer, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I know a lot of you guys came to my channel for the Cafe Racer. I'm sorry I haven't made videos about it in a while. I've just been working on the Scrambler and I haven't really had time or had the energy to work on this bike too, but I just thought I would be nice to take a break from Scrambler, put out a Cafe Racer video, Hopefully you guys liked it. Believe it or not, there are still things that I can do to this bike. I could put on clip-on bars that hang down lower. I could fabricate some rear sets for the shifter, the brake, and the foot pegs. I could move it all back so that you kind of sit like this. I know a lot of cafe racers have that. Mine should have that. I guess I was just lazy when I did this build and I didn't really I kind of left that part out, it was just easier to leave it alone, so that's what I did. But if you guys would like to see me do that on this bike, then comment down below, tell me do more Cafe Racer videos, and I will. If you guys want to see them, then that's what I'll make. So in this episode, I lowered the forks down, I moved the headlight down, and I put on a new speedometer tachometer unit. I think the front end of this bike just looks so much better, so much cleaner. Anyway guys, that's all I have for this video. Also, check out my Patreon, because that's the end of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Peace out.